when hope is gone, undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. A dead body? You're probably wondering why I'm helping Sinister strap a mutant for his twisted experiments on the metal table. Long story short, I'm his hitman and retriever. I'm a mutant and my mother never saw me in, di in any different light and she loved me regardless. Sad sadly, I don't know where she is right now. When I was six years old, she told me she'd love me, that she was going to be dropping off to her friends that she can trust, but I never got there. All I, re I remember that day like it was yesterday. My mother was nervous, even scared, while driving down to her friend's house, but we never got there, as there was a loud explosion as the car came f f flying to the side, skidding on his roof. As all I saw was a bunch of men wearing some sort of SWAT uniform with a symbol of, on their chest. I will later find out that symbol is the um, call sign of the safety committee and his agents. And my mother's old employers. My mother had no choice but to run. About time she regained her bearings from the car crash. I, I was already being put into, into the van. With the heroes en route, she, had, she was forced to flee. I never once blamed my mother. They drove... After my mother escaped, they drove me to some sort of abandoned warehouse to cut any loose ends. They knew my mother, Lady Gaunt, had a son, and they want to hide their little dirty secret. They were using my mother as their own personal assassin, killing a lot of innocent people and heroes, good or bad. If they spoke up against the safety committee, she was sent to silence them permanently. When she realized what she was doing, she rebelled. She thought the safety committee didn't know that she had a son, that she had me. She had me during her long, brief, sorry, during her brief long of time off that she, she would get occasionally. That will last half a month or, or, or even a full year. And when my mother met my father... Let's just say it's not your typical real relationship. I never knew my father. My father was dead long before I was born. Apparently, my father was one of her targets. She needed to kill. It was some sort of long-term operation. So she set the whole scene for her to meet him. After a couple more meetings, they slowly started to get closer, starting out as friends, then eventually getting together and... And get and and got married. After their wedding night, she executed her orders, killing him in his sleep. When I found out, I was much older, so I did understand that my father, there was nothing there. She hold no fondness for the man. It was simply a job, but she never once mistreat me, yelled at me, or hit me in any way. She might, have, she might have been a deadly assassin for the safety committee, but to me, she was my mother. And when the safety committee pulled me into the abandoned warehouse, they tied me up to a long metal pole, and one of the agents, agents slowly approached me and placed his silence pistol against, against the barrel over my temple. 
but I, but I did not close my eyes. Even when I was a kid, I was gutsy. I stared the man in the eye. I knew I was going to die, but I was not going to give him the, sad, the benefit of the satisfaction of seeing me scared. But before he could pull the trigger, a man came out of the pitch black portal with gray skin and some sort of red gem in his forehead and wearing some sort of black armor. He introduced, him, he introduced himself as sinister to the safety committee agents. Then he began brutally killing every single one of them. As Sinister took me back to his secret lab in the Savage Lands, apparently he has, he has his, he's had his eye on me for quite some time. The moment he had me, he started his experiments on me. He told me it was, it was to make me stronger, complete. And, uh, and the younger version of me believed he had good intentions. After all, he did save me from the safety committee goons. So I did not show any resistance when, it, when he began experimenting on, experimenting on me. He wasn't lying about making me more powerful. Though my mutant power is far more stronger than it was originally. At first, I was only able to, able to produce some sort of black substance from the pores of my body. Mostly from my hands. Only my hands. Later, I was able to morph the black substance in, into shapes I have knowledge of, including guns to rifles. But the only problem I had at first was how I'm going to use ammunition for these guns. It's not... Ammunition, ammo, is not really plentiful in the Savage Lands. It didn't take me long to figure the pro that problem out. I, I was later able... Some training, I was able to create some sort of black bullets from the black substance. I even figured out how to shoot them out of my fingertips. I was only curious if it was possible, and I was correct. With my newfound abilities, Sinister couldn't help but take advantage of my power and use me to kill or capture any mutants that either caught his eye or he wants removed. And you're probably thinking, you're probably thinking that I'm one of the bad guys. I don't see it that way. I am doing horrible things. There's no way around that. As much as I don't want to do this, I really don't have a choice in the matter. I have a device that's hooked to a metal necklace that has a bomb in it. That's able to take out three city blocks in a city if went off. If I disobey Sinister, he'll set it off. And he knew he had to f had to find a way to control me some way, somehow. He knew I would kill him. And I still do. The moment I don't have this necklace or collar on me, I'm going to kill him. Somehow. Don't know how or when. But I'll find a way. After all, I am my mother's son. Hi guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fan fiction story. Now you probably noticed by now that I add the trailer to the beginning of the video. So I don't have to re uh, repeat several things about how the story's going to go. So... Let's get right into the story. As you see, a 15-year-old Izuku has a black chain coming out of his hands, wrapping around four mutants as he's dragging them through the hall. Welcome back. You have them excellent. Stick them in the pods. Of course, Sinister. As Izuku put the mutants roughly into the pods, as they immediately lose his consciousness when Sinister activated the pods to put them in stasis for for future um for later study. I have another mission for you. 
This mission is a tad bit different than normal ones I boot you under. Compared to my retrieval and elimination missions that I've been having you do. The President of the United States is forming some sort of alliance with Xavier. So they could you, uh, unite the human and mutant kind together. I laugh at the thought. As much as I find the thought humorous, I can't allow it to progress. I want you I want you to make sure that doesn't happen. I want you to eliminate the present and if you can, Charles Xavier. Here, catch. This is all the information on or all the details on the mission. As Senator Toss easy go flash drive. I'll be going to my quarters, going over the mission plan. And, and and every detail. Then I'll leave first thing in the morning. Don't fail me, Izuku. We, mutant, we mutants are the superior race compared to humans. They can never be peace between us, only servitude. I hear you. Understood, Sinister. After studying the mission details... He turned. He turned in for the night. The next day, he left. He left the in the crack of dawn, on a private plane. As it took flight towards the United States, Izuki spent the whole plane ride over there in, to uh, to the U.S. reading a book. It's not like he likes reading books, but he reads books to keep his mind sharp. Out of necessity. By this time, he's been on several jobs assassinating and capturing mutants. He's actually he's actually earned a reputation and a neat little nickname, Reaper. When I land, the mission should be simple enough. I have several places for a sniper spot to take out my target. Of course, I'm going to be shooting from the farthest spot. Even if the target survives, they wouldn't be able to track me down. I'll be long gone by then. Then about time they figure out what's going on, I would have already killed my target. And the buildings are no longer issue. If they get in my line of sight... Within the directions of my target, I simply have to create my small black portals that I'm sorry, small black portal I can open up anywhere. Even a building is not an obstacle for me with with these portals. For some reason, his mutant powers can't be used in different ways. It's very versatile. He suspects the way his power works is because of Sinister messing around with his Geno and his mutant gene, alongside being modified by this creepy doctor that he fair, fairly re, um, re, remembers from, from fading back between consciousness and unconsciousness during the experiments. And with the ability he's... Sorry, give me some guy. Especially with the ability able to see extremely far, like his eye, his own personal scope. His eye will glow, glow bright purple, as some sort of circle will appear o around his eye, of his right eye, while he's aiming down any weaponry, any weapon he creates with his mutant power. And with his analytic mind, he's one dangerous sniper. Sorry guys, I totally forgot, I, I thought I had to stop on the record, but anyways, let's, let's continue. He can't curve his bullets like his mother, 
can, but with small portals, he can use, he can, oh, sure. That he can use. He doesn't need to curve his bullets. He can transport any bullet, any direction, wherever he wanted to, wants it to go. With his range for his small portals are pretty insane. He still hasn't figured out his limit when it came to range. How far he could create the portal from himself. He's unsure if he could kill another person from another city from staying in his current location. For, from a different city entirely. And with his ability to create ammunition for his weapons. He could be able to use the black substance he he generates and make them into black bullets. And his other weapon he uses is an energy based weapon. He uses the, ener the energy for the ammo for that weapon. For the energy he produces in his body. That's able to blast out of his fingertips. As the plane finally landed, as, as he shut the book and get into a serious mode, where he's totally focused on his goal, as he's walking out of the plane and get into a, getting into a car, as a, the car drives him to, the, to, to one of the safe houses, that Sinister have used in the past while visiting the city. Or keep tabs on the X-Men. He has one target, the President of the United States. He also he also keep in mind that that Xavier might be a possible second target, given the chance. He'll still try to eliminate the man as well, but he won't sacrifice his main a jet um, target over possibly killing Charles Xavier. He knows his priorities. Because if he knows if he mess 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 this up or doesn't kill his target, he would ruin his reputation. So he won't stop until he completes his mission. Once he fires a shot at someone, he won't stop until they're dead. He might hate he might hate Sinister. But he has a reputation to uh, to uphold in his craft. The moment he entered the safe house, you know the safe house is in a very nice neighborhood. As he threw his backpack on the couch, as the next four days he needs to kill time before the operation. So he's stuck with his own devices. Once he easily could turn on the TV as the news report came to. To the screen as they're doing some sort of story about a anti-mutant gang that f that form for the, that's been around for the past couple years the gang's crime is mostly killing any mutants that that they come across mutant haters well that's lovely i suppose i could pay them a visit a little visit and kill some time and if I'm getting rid of some scum, I'll be doing the world a favor. I can't have competition when the big man shows up with Xavier. It's best I silence them now so they don't cause any trouble for me later on. After looking online with, with his laptop he brought with his backpack, he found the home base fairly easy. As he begins to create a strategy and what type of guns he'll be using. After making a strategy and getting the blueprints from hacking into several libraries in the area. Some libraries keep digital proof of blueprints of different historical buildings. Luckily for Izuku, the anti-mutant gang is using such a building. So he found, he found the information fairly easy. He got everything together, what he needs he needs to plan out an assault upon the unexpected fools. As he just as he decided to wield dual wield two pistols, one that uses black bullets and the other that uses his energy for ammunition on one gun, and the right one's the bullets. 
Like I said, he uses energy he's able to produce for energy-based weapons that he creates with the black substance that he produces from his body. And it doesn't stop at guns. He's also he's also able to create blades. His favorite, a black hunting knife. He's able to create those numerous times before he starts to get tired. When night finally came upon him, he headed out in the dead of night. When he walked four blocks away from his location, he broke into a car in a parking lot, hotwired, then began to drive away, traveling through the city for a little bit. When he finally got to his destination, he parked the car in the alleyway, buildings away from his target. He got out of the car and took the fire escape to get on top of the building and continue his pathway on the rooftops until until he got close enough to see the building. He uses his binoc binoculars to see if he he could estimate how many there uh they are in the building. He noticed someone on top of the top floor. It seems to be a girl around his age with brunette hair with white bangs wearing some black nail polish and black lip lipstick. Bound to a chair, blindfolded and gagged. She seemed to be roughed up a little bit, but she tied up to the chair. But the rest, but she seems unarmed. The rest of the people are keeping their distance away from the girl. Like they're scared of, they're scared of, they're scared to touch her. In any way. After calculating around their numbers, he spotted about 15 people. In the building. He knows there's a lot more in there. But that's so far he could figure it out. And so he finally made his move. Luckily this building had a fire escape. So he made his way down. As he walked out of the alleyway. And continued to walk. Towards, towards a historic building. That they're using as a base of operation. As he walked up. To the entrance of the building. In front of him. In front of the two guards, well, the two gang members that are on patrol in, out in the front front door of the building, Izuku Mili sh shot both men in, in, in the head, guarding, guarding the door with his gun that shoots out bullets, and kicked the door down. Several small portals open up all around the room. As one portal opened up in front of Izuku, as he immediately opened fire in the portal, as the bullets and energy shots scattered all the, all around the room, killing everyone in the room. As there's nothing but bodies on the floor, and blood starts to leak out from their injuries. And mowing down anyone that didn't get killed by that broad shot, and executing them one after another. Immediately when he walked in the room, he saw different doors leading to different areas of the building as he took the left door and head into the alleyway to see several gang members as he stealthily approached one of them from behind and shot him in the head from point break range when the other oh, sorry, I'm sorry, as he used his other gun his energy gun to shoot through the other gang member's head, killing the two guys behind him at the same time. Izuku was surprised that they didn't rush him once they heard gunshots. The only That only means that the upper floors will be heavily guarded. A more heavy presence of this anti-gang or anti-mutant gang. Izuku leaned against the wall of the corner of the hallway when he peeked around the corner to see several hus hostiles patrolling the out of the hallway. He put his two handguns in their holster, then pulled out several black combat knives in his hand. 
as he begins to open portals and throw them through from his position. As the portals reappear, and all the knives land into four of the gang members into their skulls, killing them. As he got out of his hiding spot and began to run down the hallway, as he as he threw Oh sorry, threw his right hand, tossing a hunting knife into the man's skull as he's running alongside the walls, jumping back and forth, dodging several of the gunfire. As he aimed his knife towards the man throat as the the knife go through the man's throat before uh before he could shoot another shot as he rushed past everyone he was managed to grab the knife stuck in the man's throat pull it out and throw it throw it towards one of them from the back of the head killing him instantly after shooting the rest of them in the head as he continued his way down the hallway Dodging any gunfire by jumping along the walls. Izuku being, be, uh, began throwing the combat knife in a nice rapid succession. E Izuku knows he's not going to run out of, out, out of knives anytime soon. He can create these black combat knives over about 500 times before he begins to get tired. So he has plenty in a tank. He turned the next corner. He sees several of them grouping up. As he threw a knife and kicked the handle with his foot as it goes flying towards him. Towards the, the, the bigger one. Killing him. With two combat knives in his hand, he rushed towards him. Dodging the assault, the assault rifle shots towards him as he kneeled down on all fours and rushed with increasing speed as he appeared right behind him as all of them dropped to the ground with with all their throats slit as he broke down the side room with his shoulder as he dove in as he started to get overwhelmed with gang members He's in the side room. Kill the bastard. Kill the mutant scum. Izuku is, Izuku is outside the window holding onto the ledge while the gang members are shooting into the room ra uh, randomly without even looking, shooting through the walls. When the shooting stops, Izuku got back into the room immediately hearing them argue in the hallway as he had all his four fingers facing outwards towards the wall as his finger fingertips outstretch begin to begin to glow purple energy from each fingertip basically until the energy had to be released as as the four beams shoot right through the wall killing all four of them either entering their chest killing them on the spot or hitting them in their skull in the long run there, it it did what it needed to do, as all four of them fell down to the ground dead. He stepped out of his room and unholstered his pistol, handgun, that uh, that uses energy shots, as he begins to execute every single one of them that did survive. His attacks. Prior to those four. This is taking too long. Guess I don't have a choice. Let's move this along. Unlocking limiters. Engaging death harvest. He immediately bolted in superhuman speed. Every eh, eh, or eh, everywhere around him starts to glow a dark purple, covering his body with a out with a slight aura that's visible to anyone that. Is visible to everyone that come across his path. It's just almost looking like he's teleporting all around the building, killing gang members after gang members. Either being shot to death by his two pistols, or getting or getting their head caved in with a hunting knife. 
moment they saw him, they were dead and not even realizing it. After brutalizing and uh, brutally killing anyone he saw, he decided to make his way on the upper floor. It's when he got to the... Give me a second, guys. When he got to the, the last floor, after killing whoever was on this floor, or the other floors, as he's leaning against the corner, that's leading to the hallway after he got off the stairs, as he opens the portal up in the hallway, so small that it is unnoticeable, As he sees, the whole hallway is filled with men, with some heavy artillery, some pretty decent assault rifles, with his limiters disengage. He rushes into the hallway, shooting rapidly at anyone in the room, or anyone in the hallway. He was moving so fast that the gang's only, ro only a wreck, sorry, only could recollect him only shooting once, but in truth, he shot several more times than just once. As immediately, they all, the, um, the bullets that were in, shot into their bodies, all begin to detonate. As they all explode from, from, uh, from the inside, he used a special round of exploding rounds that he made with his energy, with the bullets. Once it makes impact with anything, it detonates. As he walked over the dead corpses that used to be humans, as he knocked down the door, seeing leading to the last room, as he sees a girl tied up, unconscious. Who the fuck are you? Oh, I'm just a mutant that's going to be killing you. I can't have you interfering in my plan, so unfortunately I'm going to have to remove you. And... Like your little friends down the lower levels. I killed them all already. It's time to follow your comrades. And I've noticed... Hmm. You were plotting, some, pl plotting something. When the president gives his speech with Charles. I see you've been planning. I was correct to remove you. Before you became a problem. This is nothing personal. This is just clean up on my part. Before anyone could say anything else. He threw out four knives. Killing everyone in the room. Besides the leader. And the girl. The unconscious girl. As he immediately rushed forward. Towards the gang leader. The gang leader could only see glimpses of his movements. Like, like he was creating after images. Bef uh, before he knew it, he was dead. As he could lunge his hunting knife underneath the man's chin, piercing his brain. As he yanked the knife out of the man's upper skull and slammed the knife to the side of his skull. Making sure he's dead. Making sure he pierced the, the brain. As he yanked out the knife and kicked the man to the ground. As he react, as he's, as he's reactivating his limiters. Well, I haven't used that in a while. Now, what I'm going to do about her, I'm definitely not going to send her to that bastard sinister for his little lab experiments. But you know, I can't take her back to my place, to my safe health. That's way out of the question. I know where to take her. I'll just take her to that school. They'll know what to do about her. Izuku picked up Rogue, making sin skin contact, and, and nothing's happening. He's unaware that he's not affected by her mutant power, nor is Rogue. While picking her up, he's wondering why they were so scared to touch her, but he put down the back of his mind. He doesn't really care. He figures it must be due without her mutant power. He doesn't really... Doesn't know her, and he doesn't really care at the moment. As he made his way outside the building, heading towards Xavier Manor, where he, where he has his little school of mutants, Charles was in his office, and... 
behind his desk. Watching the window in pure darkness as he's just gazing at the stars. A bit nervous what's going to happen when he goes in the next couple days. He's, he's hoping nothing bad happens while the ceremony. You must be Charles Xavier, am I correct? Who are you? I didn't even sense you come in. That's quite a feat against me, Shadow Figure. Who I am doesn't matter. I brought you a new possible student. I found her in the company of some anti-mutant gang, uh, gang, uh, anti-mutant scum. I brought her here to you because you be the best person to look after her. She's on your couch in this room sleeping peacefully. Just be careful. The humans were scared to touch her, so it might have something to do with her mutant power. Whatever her power is. Apparently it does have no effect on me. Well, well, whatever it is. I'm leaving her in your care. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charles. Charles. Xavier did try to scan his mind. He was surprised that there was a lot of mental blocks in in, in, in place. Stop him from entering his mind. Xavier could immediately tell that he's been training to... Uh, training to... To resist any psychics getting into his mind. Or telepaths. Izuku stealthily left Xavier Institute for the mutants. Made his way back to the safe house. For the night. And he wakes the next day to begin his operation to assassinate the world leader and possibly take out Charles at the same time. By the next day of, of the massacre, the anti-mutants were spread across, uh, across the news. Only evidence that was left behind was a bullet that was inside one of the dead corpses. A pitch black and a pitch black combat knife. He purposely used gloves so there was no fingerprints. So there's no way to trail, trail to follow. Leaving the leaving the expectors quite quite complex. They know this wasn't some amateur job. This was a professional hit. So they did the most logical thing and called called their higher ups. Their higher ups contacted Shield. It didn't take Nick very long to get the crime scene evidence and crime scene photos. Revealing all the evidence, Nick Fury suspects whoever is responsible for this is not going to be a one-time thing. So he sent so he sent his best agent, Natasha, aka Black Widow, to take this assassin to um, to take whoever's responsible for this and take him down. After all, it takes another assassin to, to kill another assassin. Or take down another assassin. Nick Fury is fully aware that she's mostly used for spy. But she does did occasional assassin work. Before she joined S.H.I.E.L.D. Did you read the report? Yes, sir. I had some analyzation on these bullets that were used. I've never seen any, anything like it. I don't recognize the material. I've never seen it before. It's not even any type of metal that's used making ammunition. There's no serial number whatsoever. Pretty much untraceable. That's not even including, sir, that the energy-based weapon that he used. But judging by the wounds I saw on the bodies when I did the autopsy, it's definitely an energy-based weapon. Well, ja well, that's just dandy. Have you seen anything like this during your travels, Na Natasha? No, this is something new I haven't seen before. 
He's no professional, but he does have professional skills in the art of assassination. So you could probably count out he's involved with Hydra or any other shady organization that we know of. Whoever he's working for, he hasn't claimed the claimed the hit. Even all even all my contacts about the assassination, they have nothing to reveal. Even they are puzzled. Considering the victim, sorry again, sorry again, considering the victims were anti mutant sy sy uh, sympathizers, and it's been recorded they've killed several mutants themselves. It's a good possibility that. The one responsible is a mutant, either out of vengeance or some twisted version of justice. Either way, we need to put we need to put a stop to it. Bring the assassin alive if you can. I'll leave that I'll leave that judgment call to you, Nat Natasha. If you bring him alive or not. Understood, sir. I'll bring him in either way. Natasha left the room to immediately begin. Preparation to travel to the location where the massacre took took place so she could attempt to track him down Izuku spent the rest of his time inside his safe house preparing for the For the mission He knew he might have stirred the nest a little bit by the reports broadcasted all over the TV the past couple days after some time has passed They're still talking about them on the news. He has everything that uh that he needs. He just needs to create a uh, create what oh uh, what what type of rifle he'll be using. He could create them and create a, a sniper on the spot. So he just have to wait until the until they begin their ceremony. He could create the weapon on spot or basically on the sniper spot. As, as he decided to, it's time to get moving, as he began his way over to the sniper spot deeper into the city, after several hours getting to the spot, he laid down on, on top of the roof of the building. As he made several small portals to the spot where the president and Charles would be shaking hands on the podium stage. As he created a energy sniper rifle that shoots out condensed e energy beams that will easily pierce through any human body. E it even could the shot itself could even pierce a a tank. He uses his very own energy that he creates for the ammo for the sniper for the sniper rifle. Well energy sniper rifle. Izuku eyes begin to glow purple as a circle begins to materialize a round flat circle over Izuku's right eye as with this scope on it shows images of current events on the stage as he watches his target begin his speech Standing right next to Charles Xavier. While while in his wheelchair. After a while, the speech went un, uh, uninterrupted. As there's a flash of purple light shooting downwards towards the leader of the free world. As the president got shot through his skull. A second later, a second shot out towards Xavier. Watch out. As Black Widow grabs Charles and Duck, as the laser shot pierces right through the wheelchair, as the wheelchair begins to spark, the wheelchair was made from high, a uh, highly uh, advanced tech technology for him to move around without someone pushing him or pushing the wheelchair himself. I missed. You're not getting away from me that fast. I don't think so. As Ezekiel shot another shot out towards Xavier, aiming for his head. As Captain America stand in front of Charles and reflect the shot with his shield as it goes off in the sky so it, so it couldn't hurt anyone. 
from the shot itself, it made Captain America go skidding backwards a little bit. Damn it, the Avengers. This is not over. I don't hate you, Charles, but you're going to have to die. But I need to move. Need to change locations. I'll just have to kill him at the school. After he dissolved his rifle, there's nothing left but a pool of black substance that seems to be in liquid, liquid base form. As he made his way down the fire escape and out of the into the streets and begins to head back to the safe house to come up with a strategy to take out Charles after all. He can't allow him to live. It would ruin his reputation. He's had a spotless record until now, so he has no plan to ruin it. He needs to kill him out of principle now. It took him a while to dodge the patrols, occasionally X-Men alongside with members of S.H.I.E.L.D. But he finally got back to safe health. It just took him a lot longer as he lay low until the heat goes down before he attempts to finish off finish off the secondary target. As a few days has passed since since the attempt of assassination of Charles Xavier and the assassination of the of the president. What outcome was oh sorry, what outcome Sinister wanted had the opposite effect. The vice pre the vice president was took the role as president and made sure to continue where his where oh, where were his predecessor left off the president before him tried to establish a peace between human and mutant kind of like the plans are a motion to implement a new sen a senatal project called senatal x-force a unit made of mutants and sentinels in a smaller robotic body, forming a team to stop any human or mutants from causing any chaos that would break the break the fragile peace they're trying to build. As you see Xavier in, in his new wheelchair, rubbing the temple of his forehead. You are right, Professor. I'm fine, Captain. I'm just trying to figure out why I was targeted. Alongside is the president. Former president, I guess. I lost a good friend. We're investigating it now, Professor. As she placed some tea in front of Xavier. Thank you for the tea. Problem, per, uh, Professor. But you're, uh, but you're under our protection until we uphold... Until we have the person responsible in, in custody. And considering you are one of his targets. Whoever the assassin is. He just won't. They just won't leave. They'll most likely try to finish the job. We, we suspect Magneto is involved in this. And a few others. We just have no proof at the moment. To, to take any action. I don't think my friend Eric would be responsible for this Black Widow. I do believe that as well. It's not his MO. You and Magneto have a very interesting relationship. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's completely capable of ordering assassination for, for someone. But he would never try to kill me. He's always had his mindset try to change my way of thinking to, to how he viewed things. He would never do something like that. The X-Men do have plenty of enemies. It could be any one of those. Great professor. We'll figure this out. And we got him permission from Nick Fury to allow your X-Men to, uh, to work alongside us on this case. Thank you, Miss Black Widow. 
I have no doubt my team and your shield agents will work perfectly with, with each other. They're extremely motivated because I was targeted. I, I have a stinky feeling they would have acted regardless of what I told them. No doubt about that, Professor. Your students are extremely loyal to you. And, and your faculty. Well, speak of the devil. As the balcony doors open up, as Magneto comes floating down and land on the balcony and walked into the room. Stand down, S.H.I.E.L.D. or Avengers. I have no intention of causing any trouble. I mean my old friend, no harm. I was just worried about him. I'm glad you were uninjured, Charles. Thank you for your concern, Eric. Your views might differ between each other, Charles. But that wouldn't affect our friendship. We might come to blow come come to blows to blows occasionally. But we come from the same race. We're both mutants. And you're still my dear friend. I've come across some information that Mystique got for me. I sent her spy on a couple other people, and Sinister was one of them. And she came back with some quite interesting information. He's been too quiet recently, so I got suspicious. He has someone killing mutants and uh, 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 abducting them. Oh, who are whoever they are, he or she, they've earned themselves a nice little nickname. Reaper. And the assassination was all Sinister's doing. This Reaper has been all around killing mutants and abducting them. He has, he, he has quite a body count, according to what information I did gather upon him. On Reaper. He doesn't know if it's a he or she. As Charles suddenly sensed someone coming from the balcony doorway. You're well informed, Magneto. As they see a 14 or 15 year old kid, about the age of, oh, about that age, walk in. I figured out, I figured, I figured out of everyone, you would be the most likely, be the cause of, of, of the leak, getting through, the cracks. Sinister is very paranoid about you, and you just proved why he was par right. Now I see why he was right to be paranoid. You know you're fighting a losing battle, right? Sinister will get what he wants. He doesn't care who he has to kill to make his goal re goals a reality. And you, Charles. Nothing, nothing personal. You need to die. Out of principle. I don't allow any of my targets to get away once I, once I, once I, once I shot my rifle. Izuku move with incredible speed. He took several. He took out several throwing um, combat knives and tossed them at Charles, only to see Magneto try to uh, try to manipulate them, but they're not metal. Before they could hit Charles in the head and and a couple in his chest, Captain America uses Captain America stand in front of the knives and reflect them with his shield. While Black Widow tried to grab Izuku on wrist to put him in a hold, only for Black Widow to get tossed over the kid's sh Izuku's shoulder by slamming her into the ground and letting go of her wrist. Izuku used incredible, sorry, Izuku used his speed and agility to get it, to get between the gap between the shield and Captain America, as he landed the back, sorry, as he landed the bottom. Of his palm underneath Captain America's chin. S palm uppercutting him in the air. Surprisingly for his age. He's pretty strong because of the training he went through. And that's not including his body being modified. By some creepy doctor. Alongside with a man wearing a black mask. Occasionally would visit Sinister. They were present during his experiments morphing him and, 
and arranging his body to make him in, into the Sinister's perfect we a perfect we uh, weapon. He was about to continue his assault until a black portal opens up in the middle of the room. As Care Gary steps through the portal, it looks like I just arrived in time. He immediately portal everyone in a way, except for him and Izuku. It's good to see you again. Hello, Carrie Gary. What can I do for you? I do apologize. I was sent here to pull you out by Sinister and my master. They need you for their future plans. I suggest we leave now. Young Reaper. Call me by Izuku. That's not my name. That's some... People just label, label me that's my little nickname. Very well. I'm, am I not like letting my target escape? No, nothing can be done at the moment. I lost the element of surprise. As he stepped through the portal back to the home base, to the Savage Lands, in, in Sinister Secret Lab, Kier Geary simply bowed and portaled away. Good you hear. Congratulations on on a well 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 accomplished mission. It's a shame you couldn't kill Charles, but I do appreciate the effort you you uh you put in. But for now stay at the lab. Don't leave the savage lands. Explore as much as you want, but don't leave the borders. I have a meeting with a business partner in a few days. I want you present by my side. Understood, Sinister. Izuku walked away, not saying anything else. He went about his business, training, testing his abilities so he could use them like they were second nature. He needs to develop his speed when he's using his guns or throwing, throwing his knives. As he did this for the past, as he did this for, for the past few week or well, a few days of brutal training only taking breaks to sleep and eat the day at the meeting did happen he met the man with a with a helmet right next to a girl around his age with black hair blue eyes Sinister and All for One came to agreement. They would put Izuku through. They would. Uh, they would assign Izuku different jobs be, between Sinister and All for One. Over the over the years, he's done several jobs for All for One, around the world, and spent a, and spent some time with his daughter. She came. To, she seemed to be quite attached to him. They send him around the world, the people he needs to be eliminated. Izuku's lying on his bed in his quarters. Yesterday, he officially turned 19. As he heard a loud explosion, when he stepped out of the hallway, he saw glimpses of the Brotherhood of Mutants fighting alongside with the X-Men. Oh, shit. I guess all for one was right. It's happening now. This will be probably the best chance for for me to free myself from from sinister. I just hope the tools are. I hope sorry. I hope the tools to get this collar off me. Call, uh, collar off me is still in the uh, lab. Hopefully they haven't moved it. As a portal opens up in the middle of the lab, while everyone's fighting, as you uh, as you see the daughter of all for one step onto the battlefield. Yuri. She personally, she personally killed Shigaraki. She couldn't stand his childish nature and killed him on the spot. He had her father give him, give her his decay cork. After they modify it, she has, she has complete control when she decides to, uh, to, to decay something. So she doesn't accidentally decay something by by uh by accident 
that she doesn't mean to decay. She thought it was stupid of her father not to do something like this in the first place. But that doesn't really matter to her. She came here to accomplish something. Good, you're here. I need some assistance. I don't know where Izuku is currently. You don't need to be worrying about that. You, sorry, you don't need to be worrying about him. I'll be taking good care of him. What do you mean? I don't understand. You poor, simple fool. We did not come here to help you, Sinister. I came here... As she touched, as she touched one finger onto his forehead, to eliminate you and take Izuku for myself. I'm quite fond of him. Despite his antisocial behavior, as Sinister starts to slowly decay, don't worry. I'll be taking good care of him. From now on, goodbye, Sinister. As she walked away, as Sinister starts to decay, as she kicks, as she turns around and kicks him in the chest, as he goes flying against the wall. Much better. Listen, League, keep them busy while, while I find here what I came for. Gary stepped into the, after searching for a while, she stepped into one of the labs, seeing, seeing someone familiar, searching through several drawers, panically. Need some help? As she approached, as she approached, uh, B, uh, behind him, and wrapped her, her, uh, her arms around his waist. Why do you always do that? What are you even doing here, Yuri? Outside of seeing you and taking you with me, I'm here to cut some loose ends. Here, let me help you with that. You honestly think I would allow that creep to control you any longer? I would never allow some filth mistreat you. One of my friends. Here, let's get rid of that thing. As she gently touches the device as it begins to, to decay. Did you kill him? Of course I did. My, my father and the good old doctor got what they wanted out, out of him. So he's no longer useful. I would have killed him even if my even if my dad didn't order it. My father has fulfilled his end of the bargain. Don't worry, Yuri. I'll fulfill my end of the bargain as well. I'm very pleased to hear that. Shall we go? Exactly. Where are we going, anyways? Are we going back to Japan? No, apparently. I'm establishing the League of Villains in America, a branch in America. My father wants to... Father wants me to run my own part of the League f for some sort of test. My father likes to does that occasionally. Put me through weird tests, and this is just one of them. As they all begin to retreat, the League of Villains retreat into the portals... Or the portal, as they head back to their new headquarters in America. Meanwhile, while half his face is decayed, he's crawling back into his hallway further into the lab in a last-ditch effort to get some sort of payback by waking up his master ahead of, uh, ahead of schedule. Apoplex. You think you could cross me and live? No, my master has been... Now that my master has been fully recovered... They will all pay. With his, with the last of with the last of his strength, he began last of strength before his entire body was decayed, he began to press the be, uh, begin to begin the operation to wake up his master from his slumber. While Apostles is in the process of waking up, Sinister began to decay away until there was nothing left but a pile of ash. Before the rest of the league could uh could get introduced to Izuku. Yuri grabbed onto Izuku's hand. I'm taking our new member to my room. Don't disturb us. As she dragged Izuku to her room, as she shut the door 
behind her and 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 Izuku. Finally, we have a moment alone with each other. I do understand that I must fulfill my end of the bargain. But are you sure you want this? Aren't we rushing things a little bit? Get your mind out of the gutter. Even though the idea interests me. What, what your suggestion? And I'll be looking forward to that when when it happens. But we're just gonna snuggle. For now, at least. For fulfilling my end of my dad's bargain by killing Sinister, and by freeing you, you agreed to be mine. Not just a member of the League, but as my own personal boyfriend. As she walked up to Izuku and tilted his chin up with her finger, so he's, so he's gazing into her eyes. I had my eye on you the moment I saw you when you, when you met my father for the very first time. I fell in love with you right there in that moment. When I saw your your enchanting purple eyes. Earth, I originally thought it was a, some sort of crush. But later, I, I came to a realization that was uh, it was something more than that. I settled for... Oh, for I settled for our friendship until I wanted more. And you have agreed to the um, conditions. You are mine. And I don't hate the idea of sharing you as long as I approve of it. If I like the girl. I'm tired now. Let's go to bed. As she drags him into bed, as she wraps his arms around her waist. As she lays down with a smile on her face. Izuki was trying to get to sleep, but he couldn't help but remember how awkward that conversation was all for one was. When he heard the terms of the deal. That his daughter set up. And he enjoyed Yuri's company. He didn't outright hate the girl. She was quite friendly towards him, so naturally, he took the deal to get away from Sinister. He would have liked to kill himself, but he didn't know how. He seemed to be resilient. He just wants Sinister removed from, from his life, so he decided to accept the terms of their agreement. To join the League and... To date his daughter, even though that was weird conversation for the both of them. So Frina, for I exchange for his freedom to be his daughter's boyfriend, was a no-brainer. As we cut to Japan, several men wearing some sort of uniform came into Tartarus. As the shield, the shield made an agreement with the Japanese government to allow them to take one of their prisoners in Tartarus, exchange for future sh favors from S.H.I.E.L.D. As you see Lady Nagat being escorted out of the prison into a flying vehicle several hours later, she knows that she's on some sort of flying structure, similar to a hel helio carrier. It's pretty big in size. She's walking through the helio carrier as they're directing, directing her or guiding her to, uh, to the boss. Nick Fury himself, alongside with Black Widow and Captain America. As she stands in front of the person that's re responsible for releasing her. I do appreciate you guys getting me out of there, but what do you want? I take it you didn't get, get me, didn't free me for free. You are correct. Your government handed you over into my custody. I need your help. I believe you would be most interested in this. After all, it does involve your son. Where is he? Is he all right? Did that safety committee hurt him in any way? If they did, I'll kill them. They were going to, but 
they did not have a chance. A mutant that goes by Sinister intervened by killing all the safety committee agents and taking the boy. He has known to done experiments on mutants. So we have no idea how much your son was altered. But he's been using him as his personal assassin in kidnapping mutants all around the world. We got some very good intel from the X-Men that Sinister has been killed by a, a unknown factor called the League of Villains. By woman by a woman by a woman that goes by Yuri. She killed him by decaying him somehow. We still, we're still trying to pinpoint how she did it. But she left with your son shortly afterwards. To God knows where. I need your help to take down your son. He's already killed a lot of people. Including the assassination of the world leader from the US. I see. So... So I see my son wasn't spared that life of a hired killer. I hope anything that I can, I could do it. I'll do anything I can to get my son back, but I will not allow my son to be killed. I will bring him back alive. I don't kill, not anymore. And, and if I see him trying to end my, my, my son's life, I'll break my promise. I'll break my one. Sorry, I'll break my no killing rule. That's how much my son means to me. I don't wish to kill the boy either. This might help you sleep at night, according to our sources. What we found out he was forced to do he was forced to be a sinister little assassin. He hasn't caused any trouble since his disappearance. I might not be able to I might be able to work on a deal, le um, lessen his punishment, but uh, but he won't get out scot-free. He has to face some sort of judgment. What are you after? Why you're so current, so concerned about my, uh, about my boy? What do you want to use him for? If I don't like what I hear, I'll kill you. Lux, why does everyone think I have some sinister plot? <sighs> If everything goes well, if nothing goes wrong, I'll be able to provide your son with another option. Outside of a certain time, I could take him under my wing as a member of the sh of S.H.I.E.L.D. After some time, I could get his record clean. If he performs well, he could live a normal life. Any life he, he, he chooses. That's including you, Lady Nagant. You can't return to you can't return to you can't return to Japan, but you'll be free to live in the in in the U.S. where or however you want. You will be you will be provided with permanent residence and all the rights of anyone else that lives in the United States. You and your son can have a normal life again. I might not. Like the idea of my son being involved in what whatever this is, but it's a good deal. You got yourself a deal, leader of Shield. As Lady Nagant shakes Fury's hand, as that's where we're gonna cut it. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Judge of my time zones, and I'll catch you in the next video.